For May the 22nd of 2020, we talk about Alien Isolation, tonight we riot, and we do a free play multiplayer. Welcome to level 330. My name is Cole Ross. I'm Dennis Furia. I'm David Mindsmith. And I'm Ben Merkel. And you're listening to The Level. It's a podcast for people who love video games. I'm at a loss for a way to open this episode. Oh, how about this? How about a programming announcement? Uh, because <laughs> next week is Memorial Day, there will be no episode. Uh, I'm not going to uh, uh, force us to convene on a holiday. So just gonna just gonna open open with that one for you. We're gonna rip that band aid right off. <laughs> gonna gonna grill out and try to shove a hot dog through my face mask. <laughs> well, I mean, get, get it get it uh, get get it in ninety five. It has that little uh, that little plastic circle <laughs> on the front of it. It's got the hot dog hole. Yeah, <laughs> That's just, what that is. yeah. No, it's it's a, it's a hot dog hole. You can slurp some pasta up through that. Just <laughs> yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Did you say see that uh, Fearless Leader has announced he is taking hydroxychloroquine? I think he's lying about that. He's not gonna. He's not gonna watch. He's not gonna wear a mask, but he will take this incredibly dangerous drug. I, I mean, I, I think those two things go together. But yeah. okay, yeah, no. I, so my, my I, 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 I saw, I saw the headline, and I thought, oh, geez, what a, what a dipshit that guy is. Um, and then I thought, okay, what's the stupidest possibility? Uh, I feel bad because I just, I literally just tweeted this before I hopped on, but it's like, <laughs> what's the stupidest of the possibilities? Cause that's probably also the likeliest one. So he is taking this medicine after the, or there's all kind of evidence that if you're in an at risk population, it will kill you. Uh, or if he is lying about it to like save face like oh i believe in this so much i'm gonna take it even though i'm not taking it like yeah. it just it, like like i i can i can see a case for both uh i can see a case for both of them being likely i can see a case for both of them being the dumbest of the possibilities um it's a lot <laughs> yeah i feel like i feel like there's a very real possibility that he believes he is taking it and <laughs> someone's actually giving him like smarties Yes. Some Tic Tacs. Yeah. Okay, I didn't. I didn't think about that. I didn't think yeah, about no, a that, placebo. That, that is stupider. That is stupider. <laughs> that is really dumb. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, on, either way, we're, we're we're fucked. But um, I don't know. I don't have anything going on. Is the thing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna defer to somebody else. Ben. Ben. I'll, it's I'll, rough, I'll, man. Yeah. I'll, I'll, like, I'll throw to you. Yeah, it's rough generating news when like you stay in your homestead for every day and yeah. like uh I, I played a new game this week so i'm happy about that at least to like cool have some more content but it's like i feel like i'm running out of steam though it's like i'm i gotta dig man for like it's like all right what game have i not played recently just, I just guess, go like, to epic store good oh. i said if you're running out of steam just go to epic store oh, oh. Mm. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Um, I was going to say, you're the only dad on the podcast, too. So it's, this that lines we up. know of. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, um, man. Anyway, you, you don't have to. You don't have to force yourself to to, to, to say something at the start. Uh, I can't. Like, I, there's, I got. No, oh no, I'll say this. I went on a run and I found a park that I didn't know existed, and it had a beautiful overlook. So. Oh, cool. Okay, oh, you yes. need to go back and see if it still appears because that'd be badass. You found a little pocket dimension park. Yeah, oh, shit, that yeah. would be tight. The All park right, of yeah. requirement. <laughs> what? It's like a Harry Potter room of requirement. Oh, well, okay. Cool. You really need to get a park, and it's there for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I just I, I, I've 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 had a bad like today's been a bad day for me catching references as a thing. So, <laughs> oh, no. yeah. oh, to be well. fair, they you know generally not catching things is like ninety percent of what I'm trying to do. Right <laughs> yeah, how are things up there in Manhattan? Ah, <laughs> uh, you know, same old, same old. Yeah, terrifying. Uh, yeah, well, you know, honestly, I'm I don't know, I. The honest answer is like, I don't even know anymore. It's one of those things where it's like, 
things are go going actually pretty well, but that still means lots of people are dying. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like so how are the supplies holding out up there? Actually, they've been a little better. Um, okay. So it seems like the I went to the um, grocery store last week, and that was actually the first um, the first time that I went to the grocery store and um, was just able to like find everything I needed. Oh, cool! So nice. yeah, cool. so I'm hoping that means they're ahead of things although i'm still hearing a lot of stuff about like uh meat shortages so i might you know need to read uh jala's uh recipe book soon <laughs> yeah no i've heard about the meat the meat shortage and stuff as well i've run into like a little bit of it but uh, i mean that might just also be a function of when i go uh you know grocery shopping too you know, I think that I go at a peak time or whatever, but also I've got a bunch of like, like we, my mom has like hopped on the hookup for like restaurants nearby that are selling their meat, um, hmm. you know, just cause like, oh, the yeah. meat's about to go bad. And so like, I've got like a five pound log of ground beef from Steve's Dakota grill, uh, here, here in Ontario, oh, no. it's an Ontario, Ohio establishment. And it is, yeah, I was going to say like, that's my... my go-to, like when I go home, uh, to visit and my parents are like, let's go out and get something like Steve's Dakota girl is mm -hmm. where we go. 90% of the time. Yeah. <laughs> I need to look this place up. Oh, it, I mean, it it's, is... it's, it's literally just a steakhouse in Ontario, the town where we grew up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, they, people have been talking about like, hey, you know, if you want to get food and, you know, one of these things, you know, this is a, actually a time when, you know, going and like getting takeout from your favorite place is, you know, kind of actually a good thing because, you know, a lot of these places are struggling to stay open. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing that's frustrating, though, is there's like two restaurants near me that I I really like, uh, but... I can't figure out how to like order from either of them. Oh, huh. Like at least one of them, I'm fairly certain, at least the sign on their door says you can like order from them online by going, I cannot figure out how to do so. Oh, well, that's frustrating. And you don't want to do something yeah. like Grubhub because they'll, they'll take, they'll take a huge portion of the, of the, of the right, proceeds. Exactly. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I've heard, something that made sense of, you know, some people going together and just straight up, like buying a cow directly from a far farmer and like, you know, yeah. ship this to the butcher mm -hmm. and, you know, do the thing, divide it up. You know, yeah. That sort of thing. No, I've heard of that too. That like the, a couple of those have gone down on the local, uh, the local Facebook group here. Some yeah. cat, some cow buys. Yeah. Which makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. well, the cows are out there. <laughs> it's like yeah. all that's broken this is the distribution system. The food's there. So yeah. I think this makes me surprised that people are very like unwilling to eat stuff like Beyond Burger patties or like I don't know or yeah. any sort of substitute for meat because I don't know. I guess I'm I, I'm just finding out that I'm not very attached to meat that much. Yeah. yeah. See, I feel like. I really want them to find a middle ground in that I don't trust Beyond Burgers because it's like, Un what if unknown what, right now? Well, it's like, what if we took fast food and tried to think how to invent something that's even more processed? Yeah, yeah. There's like lots it, of lots of steps put into it as opposed to finding a way to get you know protein complete just from right. plants. Yeah, and it seems like there's there's on the other end of the spectrum, you have the people that are like, you know, just like eat spiders. It's like, I'm not doing that. Like, it's like, <laughs> like we need meat substitutes that are sort of in between. Like, don't just <laughs> pretend to be meat if you're not, but yeah. also don't be something that you know people aren't going to want to eat. Oh, How do you tell you, David, you've eaten spiders. Yeah. Wait, what? Just statistically speaking. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, no. is this the spiders crawl in your mouth when you're asleep thing? Maybe, yes. Is that what it is? I That's think what so. They yeah. say. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, like the, you, statistically, you'll eat eight spiders in your lifetime. Yeah. Accidentally. Well, I mean, all, all of us also are going, like, you know, insect insect protein is going to be a thing that we're going to have to get used to within the next mm -hmm. 50 years. So, yeah. what? 
why don't we just eat tofu? I, 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 be, I don't know. I, I just, just, just cause, um, okay. It's my thing. I, I, I might as well face it. I'm addicted to bugs. All right. Um, <laughs> Um, Dennis, how about, uh, how, how about you? Uh, not much. <laughs> not about, not about bugs, but what's going on? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do love bugs. <laughs> um, yeah, nothing too crazy. It's, you know, you kind of hunker down the same old, same old way. Yeah. Um, I have a kick ass story, uh, playing no thank you evil with the kiddos. We can put that here or we can put that in. Um, uh, let's and, let's put that here. I would remind the audience. Yeah. No, thank you. No, thank you. Evil is the um, tabletop game that is made specifically to play with small children. Is that correct? Yes, like a superhero themes kind of, kind of deal. Yeah, well, it's, it's a whatever the hell the kid thinks of. Gotcha. It's, it's an incredibly flexible system. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, Luke and Milo have been playing the same characters uh, since they started. We're about ten sessions in, and Luke wanted to try uh, a new character. And he's like, I want to be a muffin man. And I was like, yeah, okay, that sounds kind of cool. Why don't you draw a picture of it? And he draws it and he's like this. And I'm like, oh, that is like a literal sentient muffin. Like that is, <laughs> it's, it's not a man who delivers muffins. It is a muffin man. And he had all these ideas around. Yeah. And he can like break off pieces and throw crumbs and it's like his minions. And so he's, he's going crazy with that. So I'm like, this is cool. All right. This is fun. Um, so we jump in and I suggest the idea like, Oh, what if, what if he was the result of a baking accident in the hex kitchen, uh, which is a location they visited and there's a head like witch slash chef there that mm. they interacted with. And so it's like, Oh, she had a baking accident and accidentally made a sentient muffin. Um, did she and- turn a person to, into a muffin or did she no, straight up baked it? Okay. So All right. From ingredients oh, I, I, just- I, I made, I made a muffin, but it's alive consciousness slipped into the ingredient list somewhere Ooh, yeah okay um, yeah you but, you never want to add too much consciousness yeah. <laughs> that, that's an amateur baking mistake otherwise it'll be unconscionable uh anyway <laughs> so so you know luke you get luke, one like, more of those idea. by the way yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm already a Damn it. Already at quota. Um, so Luke's all about it. And he's like actually role playing it. Like his last character was effectively him with superpowers. Uh, but this, this muffin man, he's doing like a funny voice and he's pretending like he doesn't know how anything works. Cause it, you know, he was just baked. <laughs> what's, what's the world. Um, which is hilarious just to see someone like, you know, digging into that side of, of tabletop gaming. Um, <laughs> and, and so I, I forgot when we were creating the character to give him a pet and everyone in no thank you evil gets a pet. And I'm like, Oh, actually this is really fun. So the witch from hex kitchen wants Milo's character reading the robot to take muffin man and help Muffin Man find a pet. And that's the adventure for today. And, and we're off. And so Luke's like, I want a cat dog. And I don't think he's like, ever seen the cartoon. <laughs> okay. Uh, so he, just, he just went there. I was yeah. like, okay, well, you can, you can only he, find he, it. He one. just invented cat dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now you should surprise him with the shoe and be like. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I've been thinking about this. I made something for I you. I called some folks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I'm like, okay, well, you can only find the elusive cat dog in this one enchanted forest and they adventure and, you know, go to the forest and get in and um, they get in there and find out that the cat dog is actually quite intelligent and doesn't want to be anybody's pet. Um, and so they're trying to figure out what to do as a backup plan. I'm like, please have, let me have raised you well enough to not enslave a cat dog against his will. Okay. <laughs> like, like, Sir, I, I do not wish to be your pet. Um, and so, and so Luke's like, I have an idea. If I study you, then I can bake a gingerbread cat dog and it'll be perfect. Cause I'm oh. a muffin man and I'll have a cat dog. And Milo's like, Oh yeah, I'm, you know, I'm a robot. But so you can, you can use me as a toaster. <laughs> <laughs> wow so they so, so awesome. they, they, they yeah. he, he worked his way around the moral corner and it also was it was team it was teamwork yeah, little, little teamwork. yeah. Oh, so better. so now now the real question is is the uh gingerbread cat dog going to ask him if he has a soul <laughs> this mm. this uh, i haven't gotten to yet but what what did happen is so you know they they put the ingredients in and luke rolls um a check i forget which skill i used but to like to to cook it successfully um and rolled a one like fail okay um and i just watched the first episode of solar opposites i don't know if anyone's checking that out but it's oh the new justin Roiland. yeah 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 it's the the whole uh you know the 
things mold together to become this hideous monstrosity that, mm-hmm. you know, attacks them. So I think I had a bit of that in mind. I was like, oh no, it's gone horribly wrong. Like it's now a gingerbread cat dog monster that's <laughs> spilling out. I'm like, blah, 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 blah. it's attacking you. And so they fight it for a couple of rounds and stuff slowing <laughs> down. And Luke goes, wait a second. If we just add enough sweet ingredients to it, maybe it'll become nice enough to tame. <laughs> I'm like, I love it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and so I was like, you got you to think of something sweet, and then you have to roll a successful attack to add it, or like a fast check, an agility check, essentially, to add the ingredient to him without getting hurt. And you have to do that three times. Uh, and if you fail your check, you have to think of a different ingredient. Like, you know, you, so you got to keep going and it took them, it took them like five or six tries. Um, and they added, I think it was, it was, uh, gummy bears, candy canes and chocolate coins. <laughs> 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 and he tames it. And I was, so I was like, okay, well it's nice now. But I, I, you know, I'm nice now. <laughs> and it looks like, good. That's my pet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll accept it for who he is. <laughs> oh, that's really good. And yeah, so the, he's now a muffin man with a a, uh, a gingerbread cat dog homunculus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, tabletop yeah. gaming with Kid Logic is fun. That, that that is that is delightful. Will Muffin Man ever go stale? I we'll have to find out. We, I mean, I mean if he does, that that's yet. bonus armor. <laughs> I, I mean, but also, but also, it's a it would be a negative to fast, right? So it, it would it would take I down imagine, his agility. Yeah. yeah, I guess is this is this the point where you really hammer home that mortality exists? <laughs> <laughs> just just go super dark. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I mean, l- let's go for it. Like disadvantage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what if uh, what, what if Muffin Man gets ants? You know. Yeah. Oh, or he's, he's, he becomes like a, a bakery vampire where he's got to go and like uh, eat yeasts or something every, yeah. every baking once soda. Yeah, yeah, he has to, he has to find other baked fresh. good, baked, baked good people and uh, uh, suck out all their frosting or their, yeah. uh, or their, or their jelly. <laughs> yeah. In order to yeah. keep himself Dungeons, going. Dungeons and Dragons is a lot more fun when you apply realism to it. <laughs> <laughs> None of this is realistic. All that I'm looking for is very horrifying situations to put this very small child into. There's nothing weird about it. <laughs> I, I I thought it, you know enslaving a, a sentient creature to be your pet was uh, was was right on the board there. So he handled that with a plum. I got a yeah. hand it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's. <laughs> That, how's that for nothing going on in quarantine? That's, that's <laughs> so sweet, dude. Yeah, it is. It is fun. Like uh, they are getting to a really, really fun age. So nice. It's, uh, it's good stuff. Awesome. He also, he also uh, still hates. Just to bring it back down to reality, right? Still hates to poop, and you can tell how long it's been since he's pooped by how grumpy he is. Oh, so okay. If he's, if he's ever just super pissy, I'm like, dude, go sit on the <laughs> Yeah, you need to. <laughs> <laughs> the brilliance and the yeah. childishness it all it's all in yeah. there, all together huh well um that sounds like some banter to me um i think that we should get going into the regular kind of show we've got uh we've got the grind we have a free play multiplayer i'm gonna round out with uh with uh, you know just the van boss like we usually do and why don't we get started with <laughs> The grind, the grind, where we talk about the things we have been playing uh, over the past period of time or so. Ben, you said you've been playing something new, so I will throw it to you. Yeah, it's a game that Duckfeed uh, host Gary Butterfield is in the special thanks section of. Ooh, does that narrow it down for you? Uh, I, was, I, was, I mean, so it's a Kickstarter game of of some kind, possibly. So it was. I played Tacoma over the weekend. Oh, dang! Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, nice. And so. The, that I, like that surprise at the end of the game was more impactful than like the punchline <laughs> of the actual game. Yeah, I know. Which uh, I mean, Steve, uh, Steve, one of one of the uh, lead guys over there, at Fulbright. Like he's a he's a network acquaint- acquaintance. Yeah. All right. I, th- I think I, I think Gary like uh, uh, play tested it a little bit. Uh, like he went to the launch party and stuff. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that's why I figured because I knew the company that made it was in Portland, so I yeah. figured there was some connection there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So as you mentioned, it's made by Fulbright. They also made Gone Home was their first game, right? Mm-hmm. Wasn't it? Yeah. I think. Um, so this is their follow up game from that. Completely different thematically. Uh, instead of being like a very like kind of small, like intimate family emotional thing, it still has like the intimate intimacy part, but it's uh, people on a spaceship orbiting the planet, kind of 2001 y a little bit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but 
Yeah, so it's it's a, a similar experience in the fact that you're walking around an environment a whole bunch. You can interact with objects as much as you like, pretty much. Um, and you're finding out more and more about the story through um, kind of artifacts in the environment. Uh, in this case, instead of it being purely through, like, letters and, like, uh, uh, like kind of small talismans or whatever, uh, they have a system in this game where they have, like, re- uh, recordings of people having conversations on the ship. Yeah. Like, the idea is that there's some sort of, like, how like presence uh, AI, like a ship AI that just records all these things passively. And so <laughs> in certain areas, you can reconstruct these. And this is kind of, like, the main gameplay mechanic is you'll have this, like, set piece that's maybe, like, one to two minutes long, Um, and they give you like three different points where you're supposed to go and like investigate, uh, like somebody's like journal or something like that to see Mm -hmm. like what data they have. But basically what it's doing is it's, it's making you kind of find all these pieces of the conversation that are going on at the same time. There might be like six or seven, uh, characters at a given time. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you might see one person come into the, like the main area at the end of the scene, but you can rewind and fast forward as much as you want. So what you can do is you can rewind and then follow them back to where they started. And they might have this like completely almost hidden conversation with another member that might reveal new information. Mm-hmm. Um, and, then, yeah. and because you are, you're in this space that is kind of preserved, um, you know, uh, av- you know, after the incident that happened there, like that will lead you to like new physical clues and stuff too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, is and I'm not sure how much. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Someone, what were you going to say? Is this the one where you can also like spacewalk? Yeah, so they have it broken up. One of the reasons why I compared to 2001: a Space Odyssey is the ship spins, and so there's basically two different areas that you can be in. There's one in like the center where it's like weightless and you just float around, and then mm-hmm. if you take an elevator to any of the rings, you have artificial gravity there. Yeah. Um, and so you just walk around in those environments. Mm-hmm. And you can um, play zero G basketball when you're in the, when you're in the weightless hallway at the center. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's a really, I don't know. It's an interesting game because, you know, it's like pretty much every other game in space, you shoot things and like, there's a gun in the foreground and this mm-hmm. doesn't have any of that at all. Um, Kind of like narratively, it's like there's similar like setup and payoffs to like Gone Home, uh, where it kind of like tries to make you think it's going to go in one direction, and they kind of do some surprises, I guess, towards the end. I guess that's the, what most the stories do, right? The specific zags that they do caught me off guard and made yeah. me invested in that kind of story when I was initially left cold by 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 what it presented itself to be at first, right? Yeah, I. I liked surprise number one and I, the surprise number two, I thought was hokey. Maybe mm. um, if, if I'm boiling the game down to two surprises, yeah. but um, <laughs> I mean, overall, I think I had a positive experience with it. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a, I think it's a well-made game. Uh, it's, you know, like the, the vistas that you get of the space, they're kind of like a uh, few, uh, few and far in between, but they're really nice whenever mm-hmm. you see them. Yeah. Um, the, the characters are really well fleshed out. So like kind of the same care that they put in gone home. It seems like they put here with really um, good performances too. I mean, like, and you never yeah. like the, the, the way they're visually presented, they are like polygonal ghosts kind of. So it's like, there's still yeah. a way, like there's no facial animation. Everything is just kind of communicated through the vocal performance and the poses that the animators put in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're looking at like, kind of like, it's almost like N64 box graphics of like characters, but they have like a badge picture or something that you see when you hover over them to mm-hmm. like kind of give you an idea of what they look like. Yeah. Um, that was, yeah, that was an interesting choice of presentation as well. Um, granted, like it saves a whole bunch of like uh, development work. So I, mm-hmm. I, I can appreciate that fact that um, I, I was thinking about it. another game. This is like a side note. I was uh, watching one of my friends play Inside over the weekend because they hadn't played it before. Mm-hmm. And I thought of it's, it's kind of a similar concept there too, where it's like the character is a very stripped down, right? There's no face on it, you know, mm-hmm. and that saves a ton of work that you need to do. And so with that, you can kind of invest more time in like doing really convincing animations for, you know, like what the character is. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think there's pr- probably a similar thing going on with this game too, because uh, I think it's a, a smaller game studio. I'm not sure what the size of Fulbright Games is. But, yeah. Um, it's 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 small that's yeah um so yeah so overall i definitely enjoyed the experience uh i forget how much the game costs i think i got it on sale but um mm-hmm. i don't know it's, it's definitely been, it's been out for it. a while yeah that's true yeah yeah um I mean, it's definitely an interesting game to play it's not mm-hmm. uh you could do worse so i'll, I'll put it that <laughs> way <laughs> with what's yeah. out there 
Um, so yeah. with, with the game being so centric on kind of dialogue in these scenes, does it have good, um, you know, systems around being able to like start and stop dialogue or, or walk around? Uh, I yeah. feel like that's one of those things that so, should be figured out by games by now, but is consistently gotten wrong. Yeah. So basically the, the main game mechanic, it's like the Batman investigation in the Arkham games, right? Like where yeah. you like, they did. I think they introduced this in the uh, the Arkham the the one that was not made by uh, Rocksteady, the like Arkham Knight or, or not, not that one. I forget what it is. Arkham Origins. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. it's that one. Um, so I think they introduced the mechanic in that one. I could be wrong. Um, where it's basically showing you a scene and you can fast forward it and uh, rewind it at your at your leisure. But it basically mm-hmm. has a complete scene and you can rewind or fast forward at any point in time. It's exactly like that. And so they've just made that the entire mechanic of the game. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Very cool. Yeah. No, I mean, that part's completely fine. Like, I never felt like it was buggy or anything like that. Um, And I I think that kind of goes in with what I was saying is I think it's a really well-made game. There's, It it seems like a very stable game. There's not... It it seems like a very well-made game. Like, a a, a studio of a much bigger size, it seems like, would have made it or something. If that that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing what a little focus can do. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, um, that's mostly all I got. I've spent the rest of my time like watching other people play games. I'm watching one friend play through The Witness right now, and I'm watching my other friend, another Portlander. I'm watching Perk play through Inside since he's never played through that before. Nice. So, nice. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. I'm gonna say one more thing at the end of this. Is it something I was thinking about? Is 2016 was kind of like 2007 for movies? Is that the right year? Where it's like. Inside and the witness are kind of like no country for old men and uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, there will be blood coming out uh, in the same year. It's like two mm-hmm. really great games that are pretty impeccable, but mm-hmm. like hard to say which one's the better one for the year, but oh, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Just uh, it's, it's weird how stuff sometimes lines up like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, David, you said that you have, uh, you, you have some stuff to talk about here for the crime. So how about you? Yeah, so um, I actually had a number of new things I uh, tried. So I picked up a game called uh, Tonight We Riot, okay. uh, which is hmm. basically uh, a riot simulator. Okay. It's uh, from whose point of view? <laughs> uh, from from the riot. So it's made by a. Oh, I. The terminology, honestly, of this stuff like mystifies me. I think it's a anarchist syndicate game development studio. Um, so, like, uh, uh, you know, overtly like left wing game development studio. That basically the plot is like it takes place in the far future, but maybe not too far. You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Um, of, you know, children of men's style. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Children of men's style. Yeah. Okay. Of, uh, you know, world that's just, you know, hyper capitalist and, you know, democracy has basically completely been bought. And so kind of a, um, uh, revolution has started and, so the moment to moment gameplay is you control one person and it's more or less like a very simple uh River City ransom style beat 'em up. Um but the thing is that you also have the other like people that are rioting with you that that follow you around and you can't directly control them. Um but you know you still need to kind of try to manage the overall thing to you know keep them safe and then also um they're real important to like your overall power because while they'll um you know fight just kind of regular hand to hand combat on their own mm-hmm. um the biggest thing is um you know, as you go, you unlock various weapons, so like the ability to throw bricks or Molotov cocktails, things like that. And um, when you use one of those items, any any rioters near you will also use them. Okay. So, uh, like an individual brick throwing at like a line of uh, riot cops is very ineffective. However, like you know. 
five bricks um, being thrown into the line is, you know, fairly, uh, you know, get something done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like murder? <laughs> like murder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, <laughs> like mean, to be fair, it, they are right? trying to stop you. Yeah, they, they are overtly <laughs> trying to kill you. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah like, it's, it's, it's very, very overtly, like, um, you know, set up to be like, this is a uh, place where, you know, explicitly, uh, you know, people tried nonviolent protest and the cops basically came in and, like, beat everyone down well so it's like hong kong it, yeah what well, yeah. one imagines this wasn't the first resort right exactly. yeah like, like exactly. I, i'm looking at a screenshot and like one of the one of the items you can get that's like listed here there's like a pipe wrench there's a gas mask and then there's like an artifact here called Haymarket, which you know yeah okay that that kind of that that uh paints a picture of what they're of what they're going for the Haymarket right. Affair being the bombing of a labor demonstration in Chicago, which is the reason we have May Day here in, here in America. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, and it, you know, has, um, has a lot, uh, you know, very strong uh, satirical um, edge to it. Uh, before each of the uh, missions, you get a newspaper article mm-hmm. and how, uh, I can't do it justice, but, you know, they, they all are very overtly, you know, kind of a, you know, you, you just got done on, you know, say a a tough mission where the police literally like killed half, half the people that like were going with you. Mm -hmm. And then like the next mission will be a newspaper article, like decrying all the damage to property. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you know like yeah. k- k- kind of not even parody. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Uh, the mm. one that I feel like overtly probably was parody when they wrote it mm-hmm. is there's uh oh literally like one of the police officers and one of the um early uh early missions is like I'm ready to lay down my life for the good of the stock market who's with me oh yeah no <laughs> it's like no, no. i mean like oh. uh, and, and if you if you look at the if you look at like the on the steam page their core features they've got you know a couple of real things but then like the very last one is you know uh the last bullet point they say is the unique catharsis that comes from throat throat punching a billionaire ghoul who would rather watch the world burn and everyone on it burn uh than lose a tax <laughs> than lose a tax break yeah they're, they're coming at this from a from a perspective let's say <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. and you know it is interesting. You know, you know it's one of those things that I feel like le- legitimately, probably someone you know someone could make the thing like you know is this healthy? Is it not that sort of thing? I mm-hmm. think they, at the very least, it's one of those things that I think like you know explicitly like art is supposed to be controversial um you know type of thing and you know it seems like this is something i guess i i would differentiate between like a game that is you know offensive just because like it's being boneheaded versus a game that like overtly was um you know was meant to have a message and some people think that message is good and some people think it's bad. Yeah. So, I mean, are you far enough to see if they like kind of successfully end the sentence as it were? (sighs) Like, is the, is that thought or perspective fully uh, there? I'm not sure. I mean, I think potentially some of it is, you know, I'm not 100% sure if, maybe the point there some of the point is that they're not ending the sentence if that makes sense i would be i would be curious because usually the the end game of the violent revolution is where is where things kind of trail off in left groups let's say i, yeah. I, I would be curious just to to, you know, to 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 see how how the how the plane how the plane lands but also, yeah. like Nintendo, let it on their on their store. So, 
<laughs> like, I mean, it's 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 on the eShop. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I will say at the very least, um, you know, it does seem it is... It is overtly, I guess I would say, like a pro communist game in that, mm-hmm. you know, it is overtly like, you know, every, you know, everyone's favorite color is red. And, you know, you know, you're establishing a workers collective, that sort of thing. So, mm-hmm. which I bring up because, you know, I think there is a certain degree of, you know, kind of utopianism to it. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, what you think of that to a certain degree is going to depend on, you know, some of your uh, political economic views, but I think some of it, it for better is probably going to be handled just by the fact that like it does have some utopianist uh, undercurrents. Yeah. I mean, so like how technical is the, is the, is the kind of brawling aspect of this? Like, you know, I would if say, you compare, you know, you, you, is it a straight up comparison to like uh, River City Ransom? I mean, it no, sounds like there's no. a lot more going on. So I would say the the actual hand to hand combat is very simple. Uh, you know, you pretty much don't really have a combination. You just kind of spam the attack button, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, where it gets more so is, um, you know, you have all these different items. They all have limited ammo, uh, you know, and you can get, you know, some ammo pickups, um, you know, over the course of it, but still they all have limited ammo and they all have very different, uh, behavior. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot, uh, you know, a lot of the more gaminess is in kind of managing that and, you know, figuring out, um, you know, when you're going to use things, that sort of thing. Mm Mm-hmm. There's also a lot of your your actual score at the end, and this is again one area where kind of they temper some of the violent stuff is um you know you're not obligated to kill anyone. It's very difficult to get through the game uh without doing so, but apparently there is a steam achievement for it, so apparently it's possible. Mm-hmm. But, like, you receive huh. no score based on how much damage you do. Your score is entirely based on how many of your rioters uh, survive. Um, Interesting. And I would say a lot of the challenge comes with um, comes with actually, like, managing that. So, like, you know, recognizing when, um, you know, I know something's going to explode or like getting people out of clouds of um, tear gas gas. or, you know, there's um, something I... I imagine they don't take too much convincing on that front. (laughs) Um, The AI AI is not super smart. (laughs) (laughs) Also, if you are being actively tear gassed, it might be hard to know which direction to run. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. So I'd say uh, a lot of it's that. Um, I just got to a... um, a level where basically the the new mechanic is that the foot soldiers you're fighting aren't are you know more or less sympathetic to your um cause so mm-hmm. if you're able to uh kill the people leading them before you kill them they'll then join you yeah uh, so there's, so there's, you know, mechanics like that. So I would say like, overall, it's probably not the most thrilling, um, beat em up I've ever played, but mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, it is pretty good. It's, um, I mean, so it, it's interesting to hear, to, to hear somebody try this again. Cause like the last time this kind of thing was attempted was when Rockstar published state of emergency, um, okay. which is, but even- that didn't really have a stark uh, political message to I, it. I, it did, yeah. I mean, like it was specifically inspired by uh, the uh, 1999, oh gosh, WTO demonstrations and riots in Washington, like in hmm. Seattle. Like it was explicitly. I mean, and, and like the, uh, the 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 agency that you're fighting against is the WTO and stuff. Like that, there there was a, a certain political element to that as well. However, it was published by Rockstar, <laughs> so it probably right. was not, 
uh, probably probably didn't come from a sympathetic point of view. Let's say, um, you know, just look at the look at the cover to State of Emergency if you can, uh, and you you will <laughs> see that they whoever made that does not actually have a, probably a very high opinion of the people who would you know de- demonstrate <laughs> in any sense or capacity. Um, also, it was not a good game. <laughs> So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I just, I just, I, 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 not, not hard to be an upgrade from that. Yes. Let's yeah, say the that. only other one I think of, I could think of, and this is a very different game would be like, uh, was it tooth and tail tooth and tail? Never heard of Am it. I think of the right one. Hmm. Why? I don't, uh, maybe. Oh yeah. This one looks a little, looks a little revolutionary. Real time strategy yeah, so game. It's, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so it's a real time strategy game where basically like this red wall style world, except that the animals at some point decide they want to start eating meat. Okay. Who oh, no. knows? And <laughs> um then you know, it becomes a thing of like, all right, so who gets to be the meat? And mm-hmm. there's like four factions that are each basically different um different perspectives on that so like one is the church which is basically like the elite eat everyone else one is um basically communist that is literally eat the rich mm-hmm. uh mm-hmm. you know just things like that it's a it's a very dark game it's apparently very good but hmm. yeah yeah if well, you ever you want are- Sorry, you guys are forgetting out on Just Cause, one of the best writing games ever. Oh yeah, I forgot <laughs> about Just Cause. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Um, so that is uh, that is tonight we write. I'm curious about that. I'm, I'm also curious to see how it uh, how it lands. Yeah. Um, so another one I picked up is um, oh Jet Lancer. Okay. Which is basically someone took uh, Luftrazers or however that's pronounced. And um, oh, yeah. decided to make like, you know, whereas that was very overtly just like a arcadey score attack game, like actually make a full featured kind of almost ace combat esque game. So, you know, you're upgrading your plane and there's, you know, storyline between missions and things like that. Huh. Uh, so it's. um you know, the gameplay is the same, uh, you know, Luftrazer's thing. It's, you know, 2D, um, 2D, I guess you'd kind of say side-scrolling. But yeah, with so, so the, side, side on dogfighting kind of deal. Yeah. Right. But with the unusual thing being um, your plane is kind of more of, I guess you'd say, like a rocket plane. Okay. In that, you know, when you're accelerating, you're very overtly, like, you know, whatever direction you're pointing, you're, you know, big time accelerating, very uh, large turning radius. However, at any point you can cut the engines. Oh, geez. In which point you'll, um, you know, sort of float and have a very, very fast turning radius. So a lot of the gameplay is around, you know, kind of say like, you know, using that to kind of say like get momentum and like flip behind someone and, you know, shoot them and, you know, those sorts Which of things. Which just looks badass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, looks amazing, feel, feels amazing, is very difficult. Um, <laughs> but there, there's also things where, since again, you're kind of, your plane doesn't r- really have, I guess, aerodynamics in the traditional sense, you know, in that it's much more of a rocket. So there'll also be segments where it's like, Again, this doesn't actually make sense, but video game logic, like one of the missions types is hacking radio towers where you have to be like right next to the radio tower. So you basically have to just kind of feather your uh, rocket engine to sort of stay in place and kind of hover as close (laughs) as possible. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah. Uh, I just imagine the the pilot yelling hacking like uh, (laughs) um, Steve Carell's character yells parkour in the office. (laughs) Yeah, that's and that would be fairly tonally accurate. Um, <laughs> so probably my my favorite part of it is 
uh, overall, they're just completely silly story. It's very much in the flavor of kind of a, I guess, Saturday morning cartoon uh, type of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, your your engineer is literally a cat with like some sort of device around its neck that allows it to talk. Oh, <laughs> um, up style. Yeah. Yes, yes, very, very explicitly, and uh, you know. It's just almost all of the dialogue is just excuse for for witty back back and forth. Like uh, I think one one of my favorite lines so far is just you know uh, your pilot she gets done with one of the missions and she's oh, that wasn't so hard. I've I've had st- tougher training missions than that. And your commander, yeah, I mean training missions are supposed to be harder. So that that you know what? <laughs> never mind. Never mind. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just uh, you know very much an excuse for that sort of uh back and forth um you know i doubt there's going to be a lot of i guess kind of narrative depth to it but it's incredibly incredibly likable yes. and you know very very stylish uh you know v- very cool game hmm yeah, it's a game that just looks happy. Yeah, exactly. Which stands in stark contrast to Lou Rossers. Yeah, which <laughs> is a game that looks angry and disturbingly Nazi. Yeah, intentionally. <laughs> yeah. I just want to say that the Steam page for this game has videos on the far right side after the pictures. Weird. It makes me very uncomfortable. No, that's oh, not no. how it should be. No, 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 no. <laughs> And then the okay, I hate this game now. (laughs) (laughs) And then the the last thing I picked up, and I've only done like the first mission of, but um, on the Epic sale, I picked up uh, Control, uh, which is you know, uh, Remedy is is kind of a weird uh, place in that it seems like I always forget it when we you know periodically have this come up on the um you know multiplayer question or something Mm -hmm. but you know honestly is probably kind of the dark horse for my favorite game uh development company and um you know i would say max Payne 2 is you know maybe a contender for like my favorite game of all time okay and Mm -hmm. This is, you know, a game that's, you know, very much a, of a kind with the, the games they, uh, they've made in the past and is also just completely targeted towards, like, my interests with, you know, I really love kind of the uh, SCP mythos yeah. uh, type of thing. And this is very squarely, uh, you know, that's where it's cribbing from. And at least so far... Uh, you know, seems like it does a very good job of um, of doing it. You know, does a lot of really good kind of environmental storytelling. Um, you know, I love the fact that, for example, all of the, like, flyers, uh, if you look at, like, one of the office, uh, you know, Oh, pegboards or whatever, all of the flyers, you know, actually have real text. And a lot of them, oh. if you actually take the time to read them, you know, have fairly significant, you know, story uh, development in terms of, you know, what, what the world's like, you know, that that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do have to say it's a little weird um, just because of, you know, current situations all of the like propaganda about you know how important it is to uh always wash your hands and mm-hmm. like you know <laughs> you know wash your hands for at least however many seconds and you have that that sort of thing's a little weird uh but yeah <laughs> have any of you guys played this yeah ben yes has. Uh, I've, I've played yeah. the first like hour or so yeah, that's probably about what it what I've played. So, um, I I don't know. I don't know that much to say about it uh, so far. But I mean, so far I really like it. I really like uh, you know what it's doing. The uh, the weapon you get's pretty cool. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know the the way you uh, the way it's introduced is ki- kind of interesting as well. Um, I also like uh, the weird, uh, you know, fourth wall pseudo breaking they're maybe having having. Oh yeah, uh, I'm hmm. interesting to see where that goes. Mm-hmm. And I I do think also I think they do probably the most effective instance of changing the uh, geography on uh, on you of any game I've ever played. It's pretty good. Yeah, hmm. I think in in particular there's a the first time it happens. The game just does not telegraph it at all. Like, <laughs> doesn't even point out that it happens. Like, your character never acknowledges it. It just happens. <laughs> and it's r- really, really effective for it. I'm trying to think of where that is, because I might have missed it then. Um, right after you talk to the janitor. Okay. So you... Okay, so I guess spoilers. So, you know, jump ahead th- uh, 20 seconds. Um you only ever up to that point the game is completely linear however you end up back at the elevators that you entered in okay Mm -hmm. and and it doesn't like doesn't telegraph it at all it's it's the only way you would tell is if you noticed that that you end up back where you started and realize that there was never an option where you actually could have turned. <laughs> I see. Yeah. So. It's, it's important to do that subtly is, uh, is, yeah. is the thing. Yeah. yeah. It's such a balance between, I want this to be subtle, but I also know that means that a higher percentage of people are going to miss. You it. just have to be confident. Trust people in the yeah. notice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, Really going to be interested to see how it does a lot of things. It's going to be interesting to see how it um, does. You know, it seems like it's taking at least a somewhat, I guess, less um, cryptic um, take on the STP, SCP stuff in that, like, you know, in kind of the actual SCP mythos, there's pretty much no consistent explanation for anything. Right. Whereas well, in this, th- that's what happens when there is, you know, hundreds of authors and really no central central body. True. Although I think it's also like it w- it's would be considered very taboo to like you know write anything that explained anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, whereas this. You know, it still overtly does that, but there does appear to at least be like, you know, an actual threat and, you know, kind of some some degree of like consistent thread between things. Yeah. Well, so this is like SCP style. It's not an official SCP. Right. Yeah, yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. Are you guys familiar uh, with, uh, with, with with Happy Fun Ball? No. No. Um, like the uh, SNL skit? Yeah. Happy Fun Ball is, um, it's an SNL commercial, uh, I think from like 1992 or something like that. Like it's got, you know, Phil Harbin doing the voiceover, but it's a, you know, like it, it opens up just as a very short commercial about a, about a toy ball. Um, but then the joke of it is that it has just an inexplicably long disclaimer at the end. And I'm just now realizing that. Happy Fun Ball might be one of the first instances of an SCP style thing. Um, so it's like you know, so uh, you know, only fourteen ninety five at participating stores. Get one today. Warning: Pregnant women, the elderly, and children under ten should avoid prolonged exposure to Happy Fun Ball. Caution: Happy Fun Ball may suddenly accelerate to dangerous speeds. Happy Fun Ball <laughs> contains a liquid core, which, if exposed due to rupture, should not be touched, inhaled, or looked at. Do not use Happy Fun Ball on concrete. Discontinue use of Happy Fun Ball if any of the following occurs: itching, vertigo, dizziness, tingling in extremities, loss of balance or coordination, slurred speech, temporary blindness, profuse sweating, or heart palpitations. If Happy Fun Ball begins to smoke, get away immediately. Seek shelter and cover head. Happy Fun Ball may stick to certain types of skin. When Happy Fun Ball, when not in use, Happy Fun Ball should be returned to its special container and kept under refrigeration. Failure to do so relieves the makers of Happy Fun Ball, Wacky Products Incorporated, and 
its parent, parent company, Global Chemical Unlimited, of any and all liability. Ingredients of Happy Fun Ball include an unknown <laughs> glowing green substance which fell to Earth, presumably from outer space. Happy Fun Ball has been, has been uh, shipped to our troops in Saudi Arabia and is being dropped by our warplanes in Iraq. Do not taunt Happy Fun Ball. Happy Fun Ball comes with a lifetime <laughs> warranty. <laughs> <laughs> all you would have to do is like redact some of that and it would just yeah. it would just be an scp entry yeah <laughs> do not taunt happy Fantastic. fun ball <laughs> so. all right so now we need to go find the the simpsons episode that is closest to scp <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh probably funzo mm. hmm. yeah um have you, anyway uh, cool have you played any of the the actual scp games no, they've been recommended a couple of times for uh, for Abject Suffering, uh, but they've never come up on a thing. Yeah, I like how it's that and not hex crank. Yes. <laughs> no, I just I, I can't make the bar. <laughs> I, I I understand that a lot of them are like weird, like cash grabs, but yeah. So mm-hmm. I think there, there's one or two that are kind of I guess kind of the core ones that um that have be you know. I guess aren't cash grabs, and mm-hmm. from what I can tell, I think the um, there's sort of one of those things where they're they're super super janky and not that great of games, mm-hmm. except for the fact that like they've kind of got the net hack thing going on, or like the dwarf fortress thing, where you know it's community development and people just keep adding more and more of the SCPs. To the point where just like all of the weirdness that, you know, can happen, you know, sort of then justifies the game. Yeah. Maybe it's worth a second look. This makes me really want to play like an X-Files video game. Wouldn't that be sweet? They did one. They did. They did one for PlayStation. It was like FMV. I played that that one. Oh, (laughs) sorry. Let me put it this way. This makes me want like Rocksteady to be working on an X-Files game. That gotcha. They announced for the month. Yeah. That? You, could, you could try uh, XCOM The Bureau Declassified, which is like, what if XCOM was a third-person shooter and in the 1930s? Uh, I'm not going to tell you it's good, but it's probably the closest thing you got. I am deeply asking. disappointed by that game and <laughs> kind of blame the fans. But I, that's all another oh, thing. I mean, they, they, uh, they, if they're going to make an X-Files game, it has to be like L.A. Noir. Well, what about, um, I'm, I'm what about, it's, um, it's, what is it like Thimbleweed Park or whatever? I mean, wasn't that basically what if we mashed up X Files and Twin Peaks? It's, it spirals in different directions, though. I think if somebody went to that looking specifically for X Files, they might be disappointed. Hmm. Yeah. Huh. So control. Yep. Nice. Um, is that all you got tonight? We riot in, in control? Uh, yep. Cool. And Lancer. Jet Lancer. Oh, Jet Lancer. Thank you. Thank you. Jet Lancer. You've um, already probably the most about it because of their anim- <laughs> Which is probably the most anime sounding name I've ever heard, by Jet, the way. Jet Lancer? Yeah. It's pretty anime. We can go animator. <laughs> <laughs> I'd prefer not to. Um, <laughs> hey, 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 Dennis, how about you? Yeah, I'm I'm going to go out with a whimper instead of a bang. I haven't I haven't been playing anything new. Okay. Um I can report in on XCOM Chimera Squad. If you remember last week I'd kind of gotten uh over the difficulty hump and and was kind of stomping and I was like, "Oh, maybe when I start a new investigation it'll it'll ramp up difficulty." Uh nope. Nope. I'm I'm still stomping. Uh, to the point where I'm like almost intentionally ignoring side quests to like get through the content. Oh, uh, so I can start over on uh, on a higher difficulty. Yeah, it's like I'm, you know I'm too invested to want to just hard start over. Um, but it's it's not requiring a ton of thought. To, hmm. So to you can't rise. increase the difficulty part way through. Um, you can, but you can't get credit for winning on that difficulty. No, uh, that's that's where I'm at with Fire Emblem right now. Or it's yeah, the difficulty is very lackluster. Hmm. Yeah, and it's it's like you know it, when you so much of X, XCOM is about getting over that initial difficulty curve that I, I feel like if I artificially powered up my soldiers and then switch it to a higher difficulty where I've like got all the verbs and you know all that stuff, it just I would make different choices in the early game, and that's yeah. Part of it. So, Mm -hmm. um, not, not to say I'm not enjoying it. It continues to be a really cool, quirky 
you know, sidestep to the left of XCOM that mm-hmm. I, that I appreciate. Um, but this is, this is a good illustration. Like there's, there's so many good ideas in this game and the execution on them just varies so much. So um, one of the ideas is like, depending on which order you choose to do the three investigations in, so there's mm-hmm. three factions, um, you will get different takes on their story. Like, especially I'm learning now the final uh, mission will be different depending on how fast you get to them, as it were, hmm. uh, which is a super cool idea. But I, I got to the end of the second investigation. And again, I'm stomping. I, I finish it. And I'm like, that that made no sense. <laughs> like that there was just, I won't spoil anything, but it just, it was complete. It felt like non sequitur. And there were like seeds of interesting plot ideas and none of them got delivered on and just kind of cut off abruptly at the end. And I'm like, what the hell happened? And so I do a little research and come to find out, I just killed the boss so fast that it didn't get to the dialogue that would have made. Oh, things make wow. Sense. No, you. <laughs> so whoopsie. Um, yeah. Uh, that's, that's, uh, you know, and I, you know, not that it would have made complete sense if I, if I had waited a little longer, Mm -hmm. but just the combination of, of kind of that idea and a little bit of vulnerability to uh, maybe not completely thinking through what if someone crushes this, Mm -hmm. um, kind of led to a lot of confusion for me. Um, but mechanics wise, the flow of kind of alternating turns instead of the whole team going at once is starting to feel a lot more natural. Um, and certainly, and this is, this is, like all XCOM games, as your soldiers get more verbs, as they level up and, and get more abilities, um, your ability to deal with enemies uh, in that turn-based format becomes a lot higher. Okay. So I think the first week I talked about it, I complained that it felt very binary. You can either kill the next soldier in order or next enemy in the order or not. And that's kind of that. Um, now I'm feeling like I'm a lot more equipped to kind of play around and, and have creative solutions to the problems it puts out. So hmm. uh, that's XCOM Chimera Squad. Uh, have you hit any bugs in it yet? Uh, I've had it crash a couple times on me, um, almost always at the beginning or end of a mission. Okay. Uh, although one time in the middle. So it's, yeah. It seems like it's, end it's, of a mission would be pretty brutal, but is there good checkpointing enough that it's not a big loss or? Yeah. The checkpointing is, is pretty good. So okay. I only, I only had to one replay like one move. Uh, yeah. Essentially. So yeah, I've never, I've never lost anything. Um, I've run into several abilities that just overtly don't do what they say they'll do. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh. It's good standard. Good standard to hold. Yeah, where, you know, it's like, um, you know, shots on breach will stun. So, or, you know, if you, if you hit an enemy, um, when you breach there, it says they'll get stunned. Um, and so the first time I, I saw that, I was like, oh, sweet. And I spread it around. So I didn't kill anyone. I just put damage on a whole bunch of different people. Uh, and then those people proceeded to shoot me. <laughs> so <laughs> cool. I guess you can do that while stunned or something. Um, so there's, there's lots of little quirks like that. Um, but I will, I will say that it, it's not more so than other XCOM games do. Like that is unfortunately part and parcel with the franchise is just a ton of little quirks and rules interactions, um, that, that you can't anticipate and don't really work the way you think they will. Hmm. Um, some of them are completely like, okay, that goes directly against what it says. Others are kind of technically following the rules just in a counterintuitive way. Mm. Uh, it can be fun to puzzle those out or like feel you, you feel a sense of mastery as you learn all those pitfalls. Um, and there's definitely like it's in the ethos of the game to learn it the hard way. Um, that, but when it's just blatantly wrong about what an ability does, that, that sucks. That's mm. very weird emergent gameplay. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it does, it does feel, feel earned where it's like, ah, I know, I know this is lying to me or I know like, okay, this ability triggers that and that triggers that and it forms a weird triangle. I know which one will activate first and that informs my decision-making. It's, it's amazing. And this is like the D&D effect where it's amazing how often those little quirks that you would think like this never in a million years is going to trigger exactly that way come up and matter and you know it's life or death and you're like oh man okay you know you gotta play out this incredibly complex rules interaction um that that's a it's it's a form of fun if you can uh laugh about it when you wind up having your run destroyed by one of those interactions the first time (laughs) (laughs) which i I understand puts me in the vast minority no um yeah so that's that's xcom chimera squad cool 
Yeah. Um, I've been playing more Steam World Heist, so it's just a turn-based strategy uh, bonanza. Um, oh, fun fun one for that. So I'm playing it with the kids, and uh, there was a new character that they liked very much um, called Ivansky. He's like a Russian weightlifter robot. Uh, and he he had, I, I, at the same time I got him, I also got this explosive launcher um, where, you know, it's like, it's like firing shells that explode. Um, and just did not quite have a handle on on how to angle those and, and you know, how to control it, essentially. Uh, meaning that I accidentally got Ivansky to kill himself twice in a row. <laughs> My <laughs> pissed at me. <laughs> 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 to the point, I'll have to ask Jen to actually send me the video, but... Milo like got up and left the room, walked out. Jen was sitting on the front porch and like complained to Jen. (laughs) (laughs) Can you you believe what happened back there? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) He just had one HP and daddy killed him. Oh, I'm sorry. And so now they won't let me take Ivansky into any more missions. <laughs> well, and it actually makes sense because he's under leveled now because you don't get experience if you die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they also just don't trust me with him. <laughs> so that's uh, that's my story from SteamWorld Heist. Uh, otherwise, not a not a ton new to talk about. Hmm. And that's me. Nice. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can dig out that video and I'll post it to the Slack. That'll be very fun. <laughs> um for me i have really only got one thing and i've been streaming it so like if you want to get like in-depth in-depth commentary on it you can go watch those but i'm probably about halfway through alien isolation right now emotionally or through the actual game <laughs> <laughs> i i, I be processing this what, for years. What, what, one is halfway through the other is halfway through with it um, I said halfway through, so the the game as as of right now. Um, <laughs> no, uh, so one thing that people told me to do, and I was initially reluctant because I wanted to see, was people were like, "Hey, uh, you're going to want to bump this down to easy because normal mode is very very hard. The alien, the, uh, you know, and you know the 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 other the other things that are going to be chasing after you." They, it's really persistent. It's going to kill you a lot. You're going to get frustrated with instant deaths. And I was like, okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, it's very much the case. And, you know, I think that with a couple of exceptions, like the easy mode in this would be the normal mode in, a, in another game. So like, mm-hmm. if there's anybody else who has been like on the fence about this game, uh, do not be, <laughs> do not be terribly afraid of, of making that just because like, I don't know, like things just will sense you in ways that you, you know, that, that feel kind of like bullshit. Like I'm sure it's model, you know, it's basing detection off of something, you know, that, like, like, you know, about the way you're moving or something you're walking over or walking past, but it's just like, you're, you're going, you're going, you're going, you're dead. Uh, was, was a little, was a little bit the thing that I, that, that I kind of ran into. So uh, like for my, starting with my third session, I bumped it to easy and like <laughs> bumping it to easy makes the xenomorph more, uh, you know, uh, let's, let's say manageable, but then the humans get like way too dumb. And like, so ah. there, there are points where like, you know, cause you're trapped on this space station that you know, is derelict anyway, but then there's a xenomorph out and everybody is stranded. There's other stuff going on <laughs> that is uh, causing everybody to rip each other apart. So there, it's, it's kind of like Bioshock where there are just, you know, factions of people who are just looking out for themselves. Right. Um, and you're just trying to get off, get off of the station and find information about, about Ripley's disappearance. Right. Cause you're playing as Ripley's daughter. Um, But, you know, like, (laughs) you just, you'll be in a room and then, like, some people, some, like, basically raiders or bandits will, like, walk in. You're like, ah, shit, I need need to get into a corner. And, like, one of them will, like, look directly at you. And, like, you're just standing right there, like, three feet away. Like, if if they were a real person, they would say, oh, I'm sorry. And then, like, step back to give you your space. Um, But you do the tracks from Guardians of the Galaxy and (laughs) stay real still. (laughs) Yeah, no, um, and and then just like you, you, you're standing there for like, okay, is he is he gonna go? And then like ten seconds later, it's like, wait a minute, I'm gonna get you, and then pulls out his gun and fires. Like that 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 like I've had that happen since I moved it down to easy, so it's not perfect, but it's still better than instant death. Um, 
I mean, so do I need to clarify? Like, Alien Isolation is the one that's it's like the uh, the the Alien version. If they like Alien crossed with like Amnesia, The Dark Descent. It's the good one. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, like there there have been good good Alien games, but like this is oh, this I is the one as that compared to Colonial movies. Yes, yeah, uh, but you know, this is you stranded on a station. Everything's trying to kill you, and you're hiding and trying to. You know, for I mean, for me, go around and look at all this really awesome like set design that perfectly evokes the the original movie to me. I, it's it's tough to watch the game because I feel like it's ninety five percent of a great great game. You know, mm-hmm. I think like maybe the only missing piece is like the game design of like what you actually need to be doing. Like there, like I don't know. Mm-hmm. That, that's the only part that seems like could use maybe a little bit of polish. But yeah. Everything else is like really masterfully done in that game. Yeah, yeah. Is it the um, dead space style, just sending you on errands back and forth across the ship? Or kinda, yeah. Like it'll be, hey, we need to go get this because this person is injured. So go to the med bay to get the trauma, the trauma kit. But then the way back is, you know, you can't go that way because it blew up. So you have to go through another section. It's very dead spacey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, the way that they like stretch gameplay time is that it takes a long time to like sneak around the alien, and yeah. so I, if there's no if that mechanic wasn't there at all, like there's just nothing really to do in the game. Yeah, you know? yeah. they need cool. to do like a Garfield uh, without Garfield, uh, just with alien. I mean, that mod alien. exists. Like you can take the xenomorph. <laughs> all like you, you can take all the hostiles out and like basically do it as a tourism mode mod. And like I was initially skeptical of the appeal of that, but like the visual design in this is really, really good. Like mm-hmm. it's a, it's an interesting space to be in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just like, I, I'm, I'm, a, I understand why they had to make it this way. Like, you know, part of the thing was to make the Xenomorph intimidating again, because like there's that first movie where one of them kills everybody, but one person. And then after mm-hmm. that, people are just housing Xenomorphs left and right. So like mm-hmm. they you know they want to make them a, you know a meaningful enemy here but like mm-hmm. I don't know like just instant death is not interesting at all to me and yeah there are some moments where it's real you know scary <laughs> like oh yes it's it's right there I thought he would go the other way but no he came right at me and now I'm dead and it's startling and it's oppressive and you know if you listen if you watch the stream you'll hear me like you know, catching my breath because I was holding my breath <laughs> because like, <laughs> Oh, it's real dense or whatever. But like, I don't know, just if this thing sees you and runs at you immediately, you're dead. And because of the way the game, you know, does save points and checkpoints and stuff, you could be set back, you know, a really long, a really long time. It doesn't really checkpoint at all. Yeah. Um, so I, I just, I wish that there was a way that they could have arrived at a conclusion that was not, xenomorph sees you now you are dead you know yeah because yeah. because like when the androids when the working joes like the really cheap shitty androids that they have like those things are plenty scary and they don't kill you immediately they like come up to you and try you know start strangling you and you cannot choke run them yeah <laughs> yeah they just just choke just choke you a little bit it's like cor- choking. yeah, yeah. It's just, just like corrective choking um <laughs> so can you so can you ever get like a you know, smart gun or anything like that and actually fight back. You eventually do like get something that will scare it off. Um, (laughs) but like even that, it adapts to a little bit. You have the ability of like craft, craft little, um, one use, uh, disposable items, you know, like noisemakers and EMP bombs and flares. Molotovs. It's yeah, flares. It, it's hilarious because like <laughs> this. Okay, recipe for a Molotov cocktail. Cool. I'll open it up and see. And there's like five ingredients that you have to get. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Each one is on a different side of the ship. Wait, yeah. are they? Are they? At least... Are you driving a Pentagon ship? <laughs> are they at least realistic? I mean, I. No, I mean, like it's it's all like tech doodads. So like one of them is oh, okay. you know one of them is ethanol, and it's it's kind of like uh, the Last of okay, Us. That where, makes sense. Yeah, but you know, like you're you're picking up ethanol to make like med kits with because of disinfected and stuff. But then there's just like other stuff like you know sensor <laughs> injector stuff like that. It's just yeah. I mean, like so yes, the Molotov is very powerful, so they need to make it expensive. Uh, but like the fact that they have Molotovs that have five ingredients, so it's like a techno Molotov is very funny to me. 
so this is something that they were able to solve in uh, Friday the 13th, where like one of the items you can get is a switchblade. Mm -hmm. And so if uh, Jason ever grabs you, you get like a get out of jail for free card where you stab him in the neck and then you, you're you loose and you can run away. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, that's like, a, like they do that in the uh, Resident Evil remake, uh, both okay. one and two. Yeah. Yeah. So it seems like they maybe like ins having something like that for the alien would have been a. Uh, made for more enjoyable gameplay experience. I know there are mods that let you do that. Like there are mods that make the stun baton work on the Xenomorph. Um, mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I'm enjoying See, I it. Feel like, Good. I feel like I almost would have preferred just like, don't have a storyline, just have it be, you know, completely sandbox, but then also, you know, jack their survival up to, you know, 11. Yeah. You know, you know, where, you know, you have to, I don't know, you know, freaking, you know, track the vent system of the <laughs> spaceship to know whether I'm downwind or not. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, so, like, there are cool story moments. I'm not going to, I mean, like, there was, there was sure. one thing that happened over this past weekend that was like, okay, yeah, I, I as a fan feel served. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just. I think maybe if they did the alien lesson, maybe made more things like, I don't know, combat with other humans or more interactions with like Joe's, like, I don't know. I think there could have been some quality improvements mm -hmm. just with like the mission to mission gameplay. Yep. I'm still disappointed that colonial Marines ended up being crap. Cause that was the one I was interested in. <laughs> well, I mean, they spent many, many years hyping it up. Mm hmm. Basically, yeah. they just need to make a sequel of this game. <laughs> <laughs> they have an amazing engine in place. It would be a shame if they just made one game with it. Yeah, no, I'd be curious to see what they do with the next gen stuff. But yeah. So, any, any any other questions about Alien Isolation? No, I just wanted to echo one point where I think you said one time in the stream, like this game looks amazing. Like even today, like it's and and you're you're right. Like the graphics look as good as like modern day games, like right now. Yeah. Wait, so, how old is this? I mean, it came out in 2014. Yeah. Yeah. So like it doesn't do people very well. Like when you find other people, it's very clear that it is, you know, 2014 and it's a studio that doesn't necessarily, I mean, like it's a studio that does, uh, primarily did a bunch of Warhammer stuff. Um, mm -hmm. so they didn't necessarily like have a realistic style, but like the working Joes and the Xenomorph and specifically like all the sets, um, the, like yeah. it, it is all beautiful. Um, and something that they managed to pull off is they have very good film grain applied over everything that is not just like, you know, oftentimes like somebody who does visual design will say, oh yeah, film grain, I'm going to put a bunch of scratches over it. You know, like <laughs> it's a, you know, <laughs> like it's a silent movie being aired from like 1930. No, like film grain is like a specific thing. Like it's a way that it's a, it's, it's the way that it's rendered. It's the emulsion on the on the actual film they actually get the right kind of film grain in this which is good um and mm. there's lots of really good optical effects that happen specifically like um you know chromatic aberration and lensing and stuff like that uh they do really cool stuff to mimic uh mimic glass as uh cinematographers call it see i don't understand that though because like unless the conceit of the game is that you're a robot like none of that stuff makes sense. What well, I mean, it, it's it's just like unless you have glass eyes. No, I mean it's 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 mimicking it's mimicking film is is is, is what it's supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it's like when a video game has lens flare. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah oh, yeah. It, it's using. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. Uh, it, it is mimicking the materials of uh, of, of filmmaking. Yeah. Cool. So I do that's have to say, though, good. as as a point of order, I feel like saying, like, for having forty k be your like prep for this is kind of cheating, considering a significant portion of forty k is what if we made aliens but didn't pay for the license. Well, I mean, it, it, it every piece every piece of science fiction after nineteen eighty has either either pulls from uh, huh. Alien or from Blade Runner, like Ridley Scott. Yeah you know <laughs> did mm -hmm. everything um yeah he did his best work in two movies yes he did ah <laughs> oh, the martian's fine um <laughs> so, yeah. i so. agree that was my review of it as well yeah. it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> i think the only one of his i've ever seen has been um prometheus and that was not good oh. have you seen gladiator 
I have seen a significant portion of it. I've not seen mm. it in its entirety. Yeah. Cool. Well, that sounds like a segment to me. Multiplayer. Now it is time for the multiplayer, where normally we ask you a question and then you answer it, but this week is a free play multiplayer where it is flip flopped. That's right, you are asking us the questions, and I will get started here with Ollie, who says, If you could go back and change a single plot point in a game, be it a major one that changes the story or just a minor one uh, that wouldn't have a huge impact, what would you change? A character gets to live, a lie is untold, what would it be? Oh, man. This is a good question. Mm-hmm. I feel a lot of responsibility here. <laughs> Can we answer this like uh, two or three questions from now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I can go first because boy, do I have uh, have a couple. I mean, so you um, say the Stanley Parable. Or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, what I did debate saying the Stanley Parable, in which I would, you know, change the decision to make the game. Um, <laughs> but that was just me being snarky. Um, mm-hmm. No, uh, first off, I'm going to cheat on because it's not a video game, but I think, like, work of fiction, it would definitely be uh, Avatar The Last Airbender and uh, just removing the Deus Ex Machina and, you know, Aang learns an important lesson that, you know, pacifism is not a viable uh, philosophy and uh, has no choice but to either kill the Fire Lord or, you know, usher in, um, you know, uh, autocracy. Okay. I don't, I don't, I've never seen or traumatize that child. (laughs) Basically the, the, uh, the, I, I mean, I, I can I can surmise it based on based on the the yeah. summation you gave. I just I can't add anything anything more to that. Yeah. Uh, what, well, what, what about video games? Like in the last five minutes, he learns that he can magically take away someone's powers. Oh, gotcha! And like it's very Deus Ex Machina. Um, other than that, um, I'd probably say um, if I could have Shadow of War without. Uh, Italian just being a dick to everyone. <laughs> uh, That's pretty good. Yeah, that would be great. Um, if I could have um, Harry Potter uh, with uh, changing uh, Dobby's death so that he still died but was more painful, um, that would be <laughs> <laughs> really? uh, kind of all over the place here. And I think my my actual one would probably be uh oh uh, changing the ending of Life is Strange to have some sort of ending that accomplishes the the you know same thing they're going for but doesn't completely invalidate the entire rest of the game. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um. I, I mean, was able to think of one. You were. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. So, go. Go ahead. I would take away the DLCs for Bioshock Infinite, not because I, they're inherently oh. bad, not because they're like inherently bad. Like I played them and they were they were fine, but it's just that I love Bioshock Infinite as a game like so much that I think anything like kind of adding on to it kind of detracts from that, you know. Yeah, and I think that that should stand alone. And mm-hmm. Rambling on after you have your big finale. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a good one. I honestly, I, I'm, I'm having nothing come to mind. Uh, th- th- this this is just a um you know l- l- let's do this like a series wide one let's make so take dark souls and make them either find different words like a different name for the different kind of giants or like define uh who the actual giants are because like across all three games there are seven different kinds of giants that, <laughs> that, that that are put into it and like they are actually like plot relevant specifically in two but it has repercussions you know in in every direction and it'd be real cool if they didn't just say like uh ah, important race in the world okay they're giants too <laughs> yeah. so what one no, other just wants. quick hit on this Metal Gear Solid Five, just a resolution to the kind of whole arc of uh, Quiet that made 
any sort of sense whatsoever. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh, that I've, could, got, I've got one for you now. Oh, go ahead. That could justify Hideo Kojima's, like, uh, trying to shame fans about it as well. Yeah. yeah. Weird. Um, I would change uh, Uncharted as a series, their decision to move away from having, like, supernatural twists. Mm. <laughs> like I, I really uh, like maybe maybe once doing that like I get it for for funsies but like I really enjoyed that kind of campy um, you know over the topness to it mm-hmm. and kind of knowing knowing that was coming it was was very exciting and so when they were like mm, we're too cool and serious to have that now mm. uh, it just felt it just felt like they were you know getting a little big for their britches like yeah. listen up like you can you don't have to um, move away from that to still have deep rich characters the way you're having yeah, yeah. i mean people, all, people love uncharted 2 more than any game in that series so mm-hmm. yep. where do you well, think I mean, that ended up we all know about you know all those um india jones movies that didn't have any you know supernatural elements <laughs> to them yeah what was your question ben where do you think the uh the campiness and like super uh natural stuff ended at uh, three, uh, had a big bit around like, oh, we're going to make you think something supernatural is going on, but really it's just hallucinogenic drugs. This Gooby doo Yeah. Yeah, they, exactly. And, and then from then on out, they just kind of, uh, whimpered on it. Yeah. Um, even, even in the, um, oh, it's like their, their little. Lost uh, Legacy. What's that? Lost Legacy. Yeah. Even in Lost Legacy, they kind of veer away from anything. Which, you know, at, at that point, like you're, you're uncovering civilizations that have made these amazing unlockable contraptions with mechanics that move mountains and stuff. And it's like, yeah. you're, you're not that far off. You can go there. Like, um, it, it's just a weird place to like hold themselves back. Yeah. Did they, did they ever, uh, do ancient aliens? Uh, Never no, aliens. no. Nazi submarine right out of the gate though. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And that like that that set a tone that I feel like the the supernatural twist was very much in in time with. Yeah. Uh but it just they they abandoned it. <laughs> the the only thing to do is is The Last of Us 2 needs a supernatural twist. <laughs> I'm, Check I'm, the spoiler see if you're right. <laughs> Wait, does it already have zombies? I, the, they're scientifically know? explained like it's not magic it's just you know it's vegan zombies. Vegan zombies. Uh, let's see here. They come from plants. Chris says, "What's your favorite game that doesn't involve blasting people, punching people, or stab stabbing people?" Mist, baby. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm, I'm looking at two mist posters that I keep over my desk. I love mist. So, I guess that reminds me of the witness. So, I guess I'll say that answer. Yeah. Yeah. I, I scrolled through my um, games list just to see if that jogged anything, and I came across Thomas was alone. Mm, yeah. Have you guys have you guys played that? Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. Remember that game? Great, great game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, that's, so that's as long as mind. you're okay with emotional violence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah. Um, I am open to suggestions. Oh. La Noir. No, that, 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 that has shooty shooty I, stuff. Uh, oh yeah, it does. All right, sorry. Uh, I guess that's going to rule out Heavy Rain and Detroit Becomes Human then too. Those yeah. aren't the main mechanics, but they're in I there. I mean, yeah. Chroma Squad. I guess technically, there's no real violence. Mm. <laughs> um, there's a Gone, Gone Home could be on that list. Missed. Yeah, I guess to come as well. Yeah. Spoilers. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh man. In space, you can't shoot. <laughs> well, yeah, because it ca- causes decompression. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or I guess it wouldn't be decomp. Yeah, I guess it would be decompression. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so I, I have to say though, it may say something. I scrolled down, and in alphabetical order on my Steam list, Gone Home is the first one that uh, that I get to that does not involve violence. So. <laughs> <laughs> um. Patrick writes, to go along with all the remakes coming out recently, what single classic game would you remake uh, and how would you change it? Um, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll say this on theme for this week. I'll remake the X-Files game, the the, the motion video one, but yeah. make it like an actual AAA game. Hmm. That'd be dope. I could see that. Yeah. Uh, let's do uh, the original Fallout and maybe Fallout 2 as a bonus because you're halfway there, but with uh, with kind of a more modern interface, I think. 
Mm-hmm. Would you do full on like Fallout three three D? No, no, no. It would still it would still be the top down. Um, you know, basically do it like like Divinity Original Sin, but still on a hex. You know, still on the hex grid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Has has there been a uh, remake of Crazy Taxi with modern sensibilities yet? I don't think so. No, no. I think I might, I think I go to that well. Okay. That seems kind of surprising that that has an actually right. Yeah. Well, just there's there's just not a lot of uh, not a lot of call for arcade games right now, new ones anyway. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that many people were into Crazy Taxi too. It's just like the silent majority. I didn't I didn't say that. I just said it's, just, <laughs> hey, it's considered a classic. Yeah, Crazy Taxi is good. Yeah. Um, I w- I think I would maybe maybe go with uh, Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl. Hmm. Nice. Um, mm. and mainly just make it more accessible. Yeah, I mean, like I, I control wise or story wise. Um, some uh, most I I think mostly control wise. I could see it having getting some um uh, some brush up um uh, story wise. Most mm-hmm. notably, uh, the voice acting is incredibly bad, notoriously bad. Yeah, yeah. Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> no, no, I I, I forget what I was going to say. Uh, um, oh, I'm looking it up. Crazy Taxi was kind of banished to mobile game hell. So yeah, yeah, that happened a lot with a lot of Sega stuff. Yeah. Hey Greta, can you not play with that? Thank you. <laughs> okay, she, she was playing with the bottle cap. Um, you sound I, you sound like me on every work Zoom call. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's see here. Uh, Jason writes uh, having what feels like less and less time to play games. Uh, truck driver, fatherhood plus three, sleep. I really only play through something once. Uh, when offered the choice, do you go nonviolent or Killy McMurder tank? I can't make myself <laughs> go the latter. Uh, it's frustrating because it feels like nonviolent is the highest. Uh, it, it, sorry, it's frustrating because it feels like nonviolent is a highest skill and often rewards more experience and whatnot, but you miss out on so much cool weaponry. Deus Ex Mankind Divided was my last confrontation uh, with this issue. When, paf- when pacifist got it, never got to stick any dudes to walls with nano blades. Sad times. So, in a game, yeah, I completely agree with this. <laughs> yeah, so so in in a game where you have the uh, you know, the Deus Ex style or the Dishonored style go 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 nonviolent or go non-lethal or um lethal, which do you tend to go for? I I tend to go non-lethal. So So this is why they have save files. So you go non-lethal, <laughs> then some Friday or Saturday night, crack open a beer, mm-hmm. go full on violent, get all your pent-up aggression out, and then <laughs> And reload the last passive is saved. Yeah. See, I think for me, I I tend to have the uh, kind of the Batman syndrome. You know, the idea. You know, Batman would be a much more uh, effective superhero if he was actually less good at martial arts because <laughs> he's so good that he can be everyone without killing them. Therefore, he's obligated to do so. Oh. At, I feel like that's kind of the thing I have. I mean, not not so much I'm super good, but I mean more it's like I feel like a lot of these games, it's often like you either play them nonviolently or you play them stupidly. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, so my, my latest example of this was um, Shadow of War. And I actually, I usually go stealthy friendly. And for Shadow of War, I was like, screw it. It's orcs. I'm going full on <laughs> uh, loud mode. And it's actually, it's felt fairly supported and rewarded. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That is that is the mostly correct way to play that game. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, Noah writes, what game has your favorite enemy death animations? I'm going to say Doom 2016. Uh, because it feels, it feels most integrated with the way the game is trying to make you feel not just like when you shoot something until it dies, but specifically the glory kills that you do that net you more resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So this, it's not technically kills, but I'm going to say Pokemon. There is, I, you know, since I've been playing, um, Pokemon sword in the recent past, it reminded me just how like, 
uh, the huge dopamine rush you get with the three like ticks where the ball might pop open. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. Like it's just such a little moment of tenseness and then joy um, that, uh, that I really appreciate. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of them being captured as like their death animation. <laughs> like, <you're laughs> two, 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 <laughs> yeah. As that, that suspense is there. Um, <laughs> how about you, David? Man, this is tough. Um, I think if we were going to stretch a bit, I'd maybe say like the Assassin's Creed uh, franchise in particular with like kind of the combination kills uh, oh, you yeah. can trigger. Mm -hmm. um, I thought you were going to say the main target kills where you get a nice long monologue. Yeah, no, I, I just you, you're just saying that because you like the phrase "requiescat requiescat in pace." But the the one that. I don't know I'd exactly say, but the thing that immediately popped into my head for this, so, so is at least the most memorable, was um, uh, City of Heroes, which is the only MMO I've seen that actually had, like, ragdoll physics for your enemies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nice. <clears throat> How about you, Ben? This is a tough one, because, like, if the metric's, like, something like realism, it could be one answer. Um Choose the one that matters most to you. <laughs> um, I'll say this one. I'll say the Laura Cra Craft Croft death animation of her head going through a log still <laughs> sticks with me to this day. So <laughs> from from Tomb Raider 2013 or yeah, yeah, okay. the first Tomb Raider. Yeah. So wait, was that the was was that the the one where you're like underwater? That one. No, she's like sliding down a waterfall or something. But I want to throw out some honorable mentions. Friday the 13th <laughs> has amazing ones. Inside mm -hmm. has some amazing ones. Uh, do I want to back up Doom as great ones? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Zach writes, what game do you wish had a little more time for the devs to work on it? Because you know, something great is there, uh, but it didn't get the polish that it needed. Uh, I'll do this one right away. Metal Gear Solid five. I wish they would have, uh, finished chapter two or not finished chapter two. Like if it's they'd the gone either way, it would have been good. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's halfway in the middle, but that is my answer. I, I, I would have liked to have seen what they, what they had planned for that. I'll say Night Sealed Republic 2 for similar reasons. Oh, yeah. I'd say Aliens Isolation and uh, Aliens Colonial Marines. Okay. Dennis? That's good. Yeah. Nothing Nothing comes immediately to mind. That's fine. I mean, I've got XCOM on the brain, but that's always a bug fest no matter how long they get. So Right. Yeah. Uh, Lucas writes, what is the most interesting failure of a game that you have played and why? <laughs> yeah interesting failures oh man yeah i'm gonna say rule of rose because that is probably the widest gulf between the ambition and just like tonal excellence of the story compared to th how it actually feels to play you know like it is a game that i think actually has like really good literary you know Kind of, kind of value to it, but I would never put it in somebody's hands and say, "Hey, I should, I should just make a video that like explains why it is so badass." But <clears throat> yeah, I'll say No Man's Sky for mine. I thought I had a huge amount of ambition, and I think, as everyone knows, maybe did not live up to it. But they've, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah, in this so weird time where it can it can fail initially, and because of patching, you're just you yeah. eventually get there. Yeah, yeah so. I would say probably No Man's Sky and uh, Fallout 76, both for being, both specifically because they're very interesting examples of the fact that the failure could have been seen coming a mile away. And I feel like give a lot of, in, well, should give a lot of insight into like, what works and doesn't work in uh, game design, but probably will not. Hmm. Uh, my I, answer would be Metrico for the PS Vita. It was a puzzle mm -hmm. game. They were like, mm -hmm. we, this, this st system has a million different ways to interact with it. And we are going to use all of them. Um, and I love that game to death. And literally, I think I was the only one. So mm -hmm. it's a, uh, it just uh, objectively, I think a lot of people found it not fun to have to, use all the different inputs 
Uh, we're looking for something a little more streamlined, a little, you know, that doesn't force you to get up and move around the way that it did. Um, but I just, I just thought it was thematically there, uh, even if the, it resulted in some frustrating gameplay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, OMG Moose writes, when the current situation in the world finally goes away, what couch co-op game are you going to invite everyone you know to come over and play? Hmm. Overcooked. Which one can you play with sticks? What? Oh, uh, Yo- Johann Sebastian Joust. Is that like a reference to World War Four or something? Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> that's why it's going. Oh for yeah, right there, gotcha. But... I like that you skipped over. Oh wait, yeah, World War Four. Sorry, I thought. Oh, you're skipping over. No, you actually said it. You did it right. <laughs> it's included. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's big trade in. In World War Three, yeah, I went to fix it in move controllers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because you're the. We have to have one person on the show that has hope. <laughs> yeah, we can't all black pill. So I will, I will happily be that person. We'll we'll tag in it out, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, um, I, there's a, there's some Jackbox games. I think it'd be fun to do in person, like the uh, uh oh gosh, the werewolf game push yeah, yeah push the push the button to be really fun to do in person for me it's uh it's gonna be board games like i really miss being able to play board games with people mm-hmm. so i'm jonesing for that yeah how about you dennis it's so overcooked for me for oh sure. yeah you already said that sorry i yeah, I, I, like, I lost that in the in the world war four thing <laughs> we've, we, we've gotten almost to the extent of what we can accomplish with two player. I think mm-hmm. I mentioned that you unlock like, you know, a fourth star that you can get in every level. Ooh, and yeah. I, I don't, I, my theory is that it is designed to be achieved with four players cranking. Mm. Um, and, and I'm not sure if they just changed the score targets. I kind of assumed they did, mm-hmm. but seeing how high it is just for two players, I have to imagine that you would, you need more players to get there. Yeah. And did you have an answer, David, or was whatever you can play with sticks your uh, your go to? <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. Like actual couch co op is is has never really been my thing, mm-hmm. so I'm kind of not the target market for this one. Um, I'm I'm looking. I mean, ironically enough, I am actually looking forward most to uh, hitting people with sticks uh, via yeah. martial arts. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it was answer. sort of a sarcastic answer, sort of the real answer. Yeah, but also sort of sarcastic, sort of sincere. I get it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Mike writes, I have this weird thing that I like to do when I'm playing video games. If I have to step away for something for a minute, I like to not pause, but just let the character hang out in the game world. Naturally, the challenge is to find out whether a particular area is safe or if an enemy will eventually stumble upon you. I got the idea from Souls games where you famously cannot stop what's happening when you pause. It adds a layer of excitement and keeps my mind on the task. Uh, by not being able to just warp outside the experience. Uh, do you have any quirks like that with games that you play? I don't think I've intentionally left it running, but it is always delightful when you come back to an idle animation that you didn't know was there. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's that's the best part of what you're describing. Yeah. I don't know yeah, that I, I necessarily have a quirk. I think that if I if I had one, I would be so far down... I would be so far down the road with it that I would not identify it as a quirk anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. How about you, David? Um, probably like closing doors behind me and you know that sort of thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, you know, tends tends to be uh my thing. Yeah, um, yeah. I do have to say though, as much as uh. Like, uh, like you said, Dennis, um, idle animations are amazing. Idle, like, chatter, uh, that's like, are you going to stand there all day? That that just, that no. is my... <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> yeah. um, how about you, Ben? I don't think I have anything interesting. It's mostly just, like, completion of stuff, like trying yeah. to search everything in an area until I get bored with the games. So. Mm. The auto save, the save, the second save. <laughs> That's definitely true. Yeah, over saving is definitely a thing. But I've just been burned so many times that I, you know, that, that, that that's a defense mechanism. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Callum writes, 
What classic game do you wish had a sequel or another sequel if it's a series? Slightly cheating for my own answer is wishing Shining Force 3 had been released in a way that I could play. Either that or Guardian Heroes 2 being a thing. Um, I mean, a new Silent Hill game would be neat. That's a boring answer, but it's true. So so if you could take any pre-existing Silent Hill engine and make a new game out of that, which one would it be? Probably three. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see, what was uh the Mercenaries series by uh Pandemic? Mm. Oh yeah, series. those are fun. Those are those are a lot of fun. And I I think there's a lot of analogs now, like the, the whole destroy anything uh uniqueness has, has spread around a bit, but I mm-hmm. still think a, a, a proper mercenaries game would be fun. Yeah. I think I'd go with uh a sequel to Magi Nation that wasn't awful. Okay. That's the Game Boy Color card game, kind of like a Pokemon yep. card game kind of thing. Yeah. Um, ben, how about you? I don't have a good answer for this, but I'm going to crib from Dennis's and say there's a Star Wars multiplayer game mode that I perennially will reference on this podcast, mm-hmm. where it's like a base defense thing where you make units and you attack another person's base. Right. If they made a sequel to that, I think it would be awesome. Um, and then the final one here, Alexander writes, we're coming up to a new generational leap forward in console games so we can dream once again about how the future might improve on games as a whole. I've been into all the talk about load screen free games and 3D sound being an unexpected component rather r- r- sorry, 3D sound being an expected component rather than just a gimmick. What do you guys hope we get out of the next generation of gaming? I got I got one that I come back to pretty consistently, mm-hmm. uh, which has nothing to do with actual gaming. But I want to be able to walk up wherever I uh, wherever I want to play, and just have everything connected and set up sound devices where I want them uh, seamlessly. Mm-hmm. And you know, stop messing around with wires. Stop messing around with oh, it's coming out of this output, so it's in my headphones and not the speakers, and or vice versa. Yeah. Um. I just I just want some sort of smart. Um, system recognition where uh, you you know it, it knows where you are and what screen you're looking at and and caters directly to that. Yeah. Hmm. Which maybe I'm just begging for Google Stadia. I don't. Know. <laughs> the only thing with that is what you're uh, begging for is caters neck uh, oh directly to what that is for most people. Yeah, yeah that's, so you're that's looking true. for the average, which will uh, satisfy nobody. No. Um, I, I mean, I don't necessarily have anything for this. Like, really, all that I want is just bed, you know, lighting. <laughs> like, lighting is the thing that always impresses me. Uh, it's, you know, I'm not being paid to think up the... To, I guess I kind of am being paid in this instance to think one of these up. <laughs> but um, <laughs> my imagination is very limited. And, you know, most of the big improvements that happen end up being visual. So, yeah. I, I guess that I just I just want just give me good lighting, always better lighting. I could see. Um, I'm hoping. I think there's a fairly good chance that uh, exclusives die this round mm. uh, because you know Microsoft has realized that they make computers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and um. You know, I think I would love to see um, virtual reality kind of get locked in, if yeah. that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the other thing I'd say is if um, like gesture and motion tracking actually became reliable enough to make core games around. Yeah. Mm. How about how about you, Ben? I forget. Did you say something? I have not. Um, I don't know. Anything that'll make devs' lives easier, I think. I yeah. would like. Um, 40 hour, I, I 40 hour work weeks races. would be good. <laughs> yeah. I'll share the sentiment of VR, though. It would be nice for that to get kind of buy in on the console side and be able to play like Half Life Alex without having to pay absorbent amounts of money. Yes. Mm-hmm. I'm with you there as well. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you, everybody, for writing in. If you would like to participate in the multiplayer going forward, you can go to facebook.com slash the level podcast and watch for the prompts to go up on Monday afternoons. The end boss. Now it is time for the end boss, where we talk about things that are happening in the world of video games that are exciting to us. I'm going to get started here. Last week, uh, it was announced that 
uh, they're going to be releasing an updated a remaster of uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's going to hew closely to the originals. Uh, they have assured us that it is not going to be a disaster like the time they tried to do this in 2012. Uh, the videos all look very promising. They've got most of the soundtrack back in. Uh, there are only five songs that they do not uh, that they do not have, and fortunately, none of the ones they couldn't get were deal breakers. So that's good. Um, <laughs> and uh, is there is I always assume that that means the the bands or whoever owns it right now is like, no, I want more money than they were willing to give. I, I have is no- there any circumstance when there can be like a, a non asshole reason? It, that they uh, they aren't able to get the songs. It, it 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 might not be the band. It might be that the band does not own the rights to that particular recording. So like the recording mm-hmm. rights. So the, there's the composition rights and the recording rights. Um, and usually that disparity is what keeps the the actual band from saying go ahead and use this. Hmm. Um, but <laughs> so like there are only five tracks that are going to be on there. But all of my favorites are in. So you know. Uh, but yeah, like they've got videos out with all the comparisons, man, I am ready for a new Tony Hawk game. Something else that is very fun is that all of the original skaters are coming back, but they are not modeling their bodies from 20 years ago. You've got all these old ass skaters who are mostly retired. (laughs) (laughs) Do you have the option to do original or, or new, or is it mandatory dad? I think it might be mandatory dad. So it's just, (laughs) just the flying dad bods. Yeah, <laughs> so. I I still love uh, all of like Tony Hawk's stories he tells of people like stopping him and be like, "Dude, do you know you look just like Tony Hawk?" <laughs> Tony Hawk's yeah. Twitter feed is just one ongoing existential nightmare. My favorite is somebody <laughs> asked, "Are you Tony Hawk?" And Tony Hawk said, "Yes," and then the person just responded, "Why?" <laughs> 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 Uh, that uh, why was directed at the 2012 remake that failed (laughs) but yeah like this is coming out in september uh it looks amazing to me uh it was everything in uh everything i could do to not just go pull out an old tony hawk game and play it this weekend Mm -hmm. so yeah uh i'm 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 crazy into that uh let's see here next one dennis what you got Yeah, mine is going to be just a Thing Exists story. Uh, There is a game uh, that is becoming available on the 20th. So by the time you hear this, you can go download it um, called Crucible. And it's by like Amazon Games. It looks like, you know, I I usually describe the cycle, which you all know how I feel about. I usually describe that as like a mix between Apex Legends and Overwatch. Um, And I think if it's a spectrum and, and they're in equal increments, I would say there's like, Apex Legends, The Cycle, Crucible, Overwatch. Okay. Uh, this is looking a lot more uh, kind of gamey um, or cartoony, I would say. Mm-hmm. And um, More Rule more, 34? More what? More Rule 34? You're going to have to explain that one to me. Rule 34 <laughs> is a joking law of the internet where oh, if it you, exists, sorry, there's... Yeah. And so no, like, is, is it as horny as Overwatch, I guess, is what is what David is saying. <laughs> Sorry, I was I was not in that mode. Uh, yeah, something like that. Although the big, you know, no, they'll they'll make porn out of all of them. Um, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so it's it's more cartoony. It, it has the objective based nature, but maybe a little bit more of a PvP format. Um, maybe like an open world Overwatch is the right way to describe it. I'll I'll be interested to to get my hands on it, just because I I really love the way the cycle blends PVE and PvP together. And it looks like this has a lot of that ethos. So uh, Crucible is coming out. You should be able to go download it right now and play it. Uh, you will likely find me somewhere in it. Okay. Uh, and Ben, how about you? I got two news stories. Uh, there are two different tech demos over the past week for PS5. So one was actually would have been a good segue, but I didn't paste it in time uh, from the uh, last part yeah. of the multiplayer. But they did a tech demo for the Unreal Engine. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. It looks pretty sweet. They mostly, I mean, they talked about basically like how you could import assets into it. And uh, they just kind of did like a lighting demo and stuff like that. Um, it looks really awesome. Like, I don't, I, you know, it's one of those things where it's like you never know how it's going to translate into actual games later mm-hmm. down the road. Um, 
but what they showed looked really impressive. I don't know if I would play that exact game that they showed, um, but I don't know. It's like a weird, like flying Indiana Jones type game. But uh, <laughs> another game that they did a demo of to show what the gameplay was was a game called Ghost of. I'm gonna not know how to pronounce it. Ghost uh, of Tsushima. That really cool. Yeah. And that looked, yeah, yeah, it looks sweet. It's like a blend of like open world in the sense that it kind of looks like a kind of like ancient Japanese version of Horizon Zero Dawn, kind of. Yeah, it's the Horizon um, Zero Dawn team, and it takes place in, I, I believe, Sengoku. Mm-hmm. It's Samurai Japan, let's say. So yeah. you, got, you got a good eye. All right, yeah. I guess that, yeah, all right, sweet. And then there's <laughs> like, uh, but there's like stealth mechanics in it that you can have. Like uh, the character can wear a mask at one point, and that's like an alternate personality, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, the game looks really pretty. So it looks kind of, in, in that sense, it looks really similar to Horizon Zero Dawn, where mm-hmm. it, yeah, it just looks gorgeous. Hold on, I uh, got to back that up. I I don't think it is the studio of uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. It is. Okay. It's, Infa- it's the it's the studio that did Infamous. Oh, is it really? Yeah, it's Sucker Punch. Oh wow, I could have sworn yeah, that it yeah. was. Oh, no, nope. Gorilla. I... Gorilla did Horizon Zero Dawn. Sucker Punch did Infamous. Gotcha. It was okay. a Sony, Sony first party studio. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, I, I do not know where I got that mixed up. Yeah, all good, all good. It's something, something rang weird that I was like, oh, that's cool if it is, and then didn't pay right, me. right. Huh. Uh, but yeah, it, it looks super cool. Sorry to derail you, Ben. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, I guess, good news about PS5 just in general. Um, also, uh, John Blow, the guy who made The Witness, streams on Twitch a bunch. And he hasn't outright said it, but he basically has a PS5 that he's doing like uh, game testing on or whatever. But mm-hmm. he's also spoken very highly of it. So mm-hmm. it seems seems like it, it's very promising right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's just it's super weird that we are very much in the period of time when... Oh, just everything is going to start being a generation straddling game. Like I am absolutely playing mm-hmm. games right now that are going to be, they're going to get PS five remasters, mm-hmm. you know, specific, specifically yeah. for 4k, you know, yeah. there's going to be the ton of just awkward abandoned wear kind of stuff where it's, it's, you know, mm-hmm. they, they don't quite want to take it over, but they, yeah. you know, they know no one's going to buy it on the old system. And yeah, yeah, blah, they, blah. They, they've got a PS five version of last of us too like waiting sitting there ready to go so (laughs) (laughs) the least surprising surprise yes um cool well that sounds oh good so i actually lied i actually found one that should be real quick okay um so it turns out that uh john carmack uh is uh oh making contributions to OpenBSD, which is sort of like it's it's basically like off brand Linux kind of. You know, okay. Um you know, it's it's another Linux thing. Yeah. Uh but it's it's also uh you know just kinda cool because that's kind of interesting that he's still doing stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's also cool because um the actual like message and um question that I sent is just super, super humble. Mm-hmm. He's basically basically asking him like, um, you know, is it okay if I submit changes that don't actually change any functionality, but might make it uh, easier for people to understand things? Mm-hmm. Of course, the answer and, is, of course you can. You're John Carmack, but you don't want <laughs> him to be the person to say I'm John Carmack. So, so of course I can. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Doesn't he still work it for Facebook? I'm surprised that he can do this. Yeah, no, I, th- I think he's. I, mean, I think he's with Oculus still, possibly. Yeah, yeah. yeah I guess when you're that high up, you can kind of do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's the thing. Yeah, who, I who are you going to get in trouble with? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and and that's know. the thing I didn't realize until like much later is that like, not. I mean, not. Not only is he like obviously made a whole bunch of really famous video games, but like is also legendary for his programming ability. Oh yeah, no, he's, uh, he's legitimately, he's a genius. Yeah. <laughs> like there is a, uh, uh, you know, he, he, he can do whatever he wants to, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Well, that sounds like a segment to me. How do you all feel about bundling it up? Buttons. Buttons. 
the credit. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the level number 330. Uh, as we said at the beginning, there will be no episode next week because we're not going to be recording on a holiday here in the U.S. Everybody, um, please be safe if you're going to go venture out. If you're going to see people you haven't seen in a while, uh, please make sure that you are protecting yourself and others. Um, you know, I, I, I will trust you to, to, to make that decision, but I guess it's smart. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but other than that, you know, the regular kind of stuff, Greta knows that I'm about to wrap up the show. She always knows <laughs> what I'm, she, 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 she knows when I'm wrapping up streams. She knows when I'm wrapping up shows. So I need to go and give her some treats. So you know what to do all the usual stuff, Patreon ratings, reviews, tell your friends. Um, am I, am I forgetting anything? Don't think so. Okay. Um, so I've been Cole Ross. You can see my tweets online, uh, on Twitter at Cole Ross. I've been Dennis Furia. And this week I learned how to make a website and Ooh. you can now go to deck of wonders game.com. Very cool. I'm David Mysmith. I'm Bobby and weaving. Okay. <laughs> and I'm Ben Merkel. Nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I, I, if I can, if I can interject just cause it's, it's top of mind for me. Um, I, the on deck of wonders game.com. Mm -hmm. I, I put together a little um, board game brand equity pyramid tool. Mm -hmm. I, I did a survey on like what game designers are interested in that I might be able to, you know, contribute to. Okay. And this was the top thing. And so it's just like a really succinct way to like map out the brand identity for a given board game. Mm -hmm. oh, um, cool. And it kind of, it's unique from, from, you know, what you'll find anywhere else because it actually accounts for the fact that there's kind of theme and mechanics going on at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, so check that out if you're, if you're doing game design of any kind, or if you just want to try like mapping a favorite game, it works for video games and board games. Hmm. Um, and I'm pretty pleased with it and hopefully other people will be too. Nice. That's a deck of wonders mm -hmm. and stick around for some titles. I've got two. Um, the first one is it has a hot dog hole. <laughs> yep. Um, and the other one is inventing cat dog. <laughs> Finding Nemo. <laughs> Chasing Bobby Fisher. Inventing cat dog. <laughs> Designing women. Inventing cat dog. <laughs> <laughs> Both good. Uh, I have four. Okay. So I've got the hot dog hole. Okay. That's for sure. Uh, right off the bat there. I've got We Can Go Animator. I have that. <laughs> um, I have Corrective, cho excuse me, Corrective Choking. Oh, no, I don't <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've got my ska band name. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> What's your Cole. What's your ska band name, Dennis? The Flying Dad Bods. Ooh, shit. I like the Flying Dad Bods. <laughs> Uh, so I I had one was that was that your last one sorry that's, that's my four okay okay um I had one it uh additional one I also had we can go anime but I also had uh might as well face it you're addicted to bugs <laughs> <laughs> okay how about you Ben I wrote down one but I don't even want to share it you guys covered enough <laughs> okay um I'm going to veto the animator uh just because I don't want to get people I don't want to anger anime people um yeah and I kind of <laughs> like flying dad bods I like flying dad bods <laughs> so, yeah uh so here's my question for y'all is dad bods one word or two cuz I have it I wrote it down as one but I wrote it as one as well the okay. flying dad bods okay um there we go the flying dad bods wins I'm just imagining that would be the greatest uh like I, I know a lot of uh a lot of people that, you know, about my my age that have gone into like uh where they call them like like circus skills stuff. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would be the greatest name for like if you wanted to do like a hobbyist, you know, like oh, it's, their, it's their it's their troop. Yeah. Yeah. I will say that the internet claims that dad bot is two words. But it is wrong. <laughs> As opposed to Dad Bob. My man's name. <laughs> also, wanna, I wait. I'll, I want to make two statements after the recording is over. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, um, uh, we, 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 we should end the recording. So I'm going to end the recording now.